Hungry. Yeah, hungry. You know why? Me either. But you can just ask this guy about it. But you guys know me. I am just here to deliver to the public what they want the most. Which, unfortunately, don't include a girlfriend. But I can show you how to own as hungry. And that will do for now. First of all, of course, our rivals and states. In this specific situation, we need to take a good look in two fellas right at the start. Bohemia and Poland. Poland to know if you'll be doing Joe Mama jokes of them or asking them to be our buddies. Bohemia to know if you need to restart the game. Since they and Austria need to hate each other so we can do our magic here. But don't you hurry, 90% of the time that is what will happen. Or at the very least, not in a good relation. With that out of the way, Rival Venice, the Bro Romance, and the third one you can choose between Poland or Aragon. Aragon to get bigger PP when they lose Naples, Poland to be able to proceed in your mission tree. Since Poland start as one of my rivals, I'll be rival them back. As for the states, keep in mind that we start with a bit more than your usual crawling. So let's take a good advantage of it. For the clergy, give the religious states, the church sanctuaries, the oversight by the clergy, and the religious diplomats. Clerical education unfortunately was nerfed, so it's not that useful anymore. As for the nobility, give the premise of the nobility, the increased levies, you'll be needed a lot of manpower in the early wars, supremacy over the crowd to make the equilibrium a bit easier for the other states, and I like to give the nobility of the rights as well. And last but not least, the burghers. Give the land of commerce, patronage of the arts, grant the orthodox autonomy because I don't feel like in covert in the beginning, and to not skyrock their influence, give on the bookkeeping now. What we can do right now is to either give the religious culture to the clergy or keep the 5% crawling. I'll be keeping my crawling signs, I can't be bothered with the other culture's penalty that the religious culture give us. Take things that to the burgers, do the manpower trick, summon the dire, and seize land. With that, we got our cheaper advisor here in our agenda. Now, with that out of the way, what about all your forts and lower the maintenance of the troops? And finally, get yourself some advisors. Money is not exactly a problem since we started the Hound Gold Mine and we can easily snipe the Kosovo Gold Mine as well. So I'll be grabbing level 1 advisors for all categories, preferably a heal inflation for adenine, a trade efficiency for diplo, and a morale or discipline for military if you didn't get your cheaper advisor from the agenda. That is what I managed to get since I need to wait for a couple months to get my cheaper one here. Not ideal, but I will not continue to repeat what my mom told me my entire life. Diplomatically, we need to decide a thing if we want to continue Catholic or change to orthodox. I don't think that a pope is cringe anymore, so I'll be sending an alliance offer to the members of the HRE, but first of all, I'll be trying to start by improve my relation with Burgundy. My diplo rap guy is more than enough to secure us an alliance and never accept the royal marriage offer from Burgundy. We are the ones that need to send the royal marriage offer. Now I'll start in some relations with some members of the HRE, such as Brandenburg, Saxony, and also the Platnat. But since they have Saxony as one of their enemies, I'm not so sure if he'll be able to do it. Alliance number one. Alliance number two, and now we can finally start to build some spine network in Bohemia, Serbia, and Wallachia. And when the diet of 4045 happens, well, we can get a stability and get no ruler whatsoever, or give the middle finger to Austria and get Janus as our ruler. I kind of like that the most, and Janus itself is a chat of ruler. So we'll be using that as soon as we get ourselves a reason to fight Bohemia and our truce is over. For the time being, I'll be start paying for the forts in both fronts of Serbia and Wallachia and bring my troops all the way over here just to make sure. I'll be also getting myself the free company as a backup force. And Poland, you know the drill? Screw you. That should be enough to get the old alliance missions and a couple of clans here. Unfortunately, I'll not be able to co-belize in Serbia because for no reason whatsoever, the Ottomans decide to guarantee Serbia. So the way to go is just to suck it up and thank the extra A. But at the very least, we can try to get another general here. And with some luck. Anyway, I heard that Valakia is great at this time of year. So let's dive in. With some good rolls, we might be able to even widen. Whoop. 
Exactly. So I'll be leaving the free company here, send my man stack into Kyurkyu, and get my dudes in Bratsnevo, who have a better general, more troops, and even more cavalry. And rep. Yep. That's a quick siege, definitely. If they are going to all get united in just one title, I don't see a reason to not fight in them. With that, I think that the war is pretty much over. It's just a matter of sieging the stuff down. With speaking of which, there is not really a good reason to fight the rest of the army, so I'll be right away getting out of the war. For Serbia, I'll be getting all that province here, so no one else can fight Serbia other than Bosnia and Bosnia are kind of their allies, which means that as soon as we declare on Bosnia, we'll be able to also gobble up on Serbia and a couple of decades as well. Because why not? As for Valakia, you'll be getting all their province. What we can always do here is to concentrate a bit of land before releasing Valakia, so we'll be getting more dev into our capital and then release Valakia, which don't have any issue whatsoever with us other than being a uh, a red nation. Wait a second, that's a huge side Bohemia, which complete another mission that is control Valakia, which can our new clans here. So what I'll be even doing is to cancel all of their cars, reduce the auto exhaustion, and then make cars out of it. So we have extra adamant to work on and all this stuff. And I'll be starting to manually build a spa network in Bosnia. We can fight them and also finish Serbia at the same time. And by doing so, we will complete another mission that is Control Bohemia, that it not only will give us Diplo power, but also cleanse all the way around here and the rest of the Balkans. Even if you already start a war with Bosnia, you'll be able to get the rest of the province without playing any more Diplo. Diplo that you'll be already start losing into improving home all the way into 10 Diplo points. So we can keep our maintenance high the forts up and the balance green. And if our cars almost done, we can start to pay for our troops again. We could do some nasty stuff with them. I mean, basic stuff. Basic. I'll be declaring for the conquest of Bosnia, marching all my troops right away into the Kion in Serbia and then go into Bosnia. Maybe we can catch them here in Zeta. And once again, it's just a matter of finishing sieges. Oh! That's a bridge. Oh, and that can happen as soon as it's 40, 50 and start. But our initial her, that is also the her of Austria, just died. So we lost Austria's historical friend, but got a really decent her, Marias Cordinus. And well, it's not like I'm going to complain for a 4, 5, 6. And in the Bosnia war, I'll be first of all annexing Serbia, so I can complete another mission here, that will give me more clans around here, and then I'll be conquering Bosnia, so I don't pay for any extra Diplo, in that way I can use my Diplo to improve my gold mines here. And now we can finally complete another one of our missions that is the Hungarian section, that we get some prestige and a lot of clans here in Bohemia, although we have a better military attack and probably a better general, that all here will be a bit harder than the other ones that we fight so far, keep in mind that you need to be a bit more cautious for now on. And I will recommend you to write send a merchant here into Saxony and set a polish to establish community so we'll be getting a bit more of AED key around here and that was way easier than I initially thought I'll be taking that five province here pretty much just snaking in order to spread more the aggress expansion and manage us to complete another one of our missions that we can get province into Lusaria, Moravia or Silesia. On top of that, operations, money and I don't know, give up your alliance with Palatinate I guess. And in terms of A, pretty much no A whatsoever. Just maybe it's a good idea to improve a little bit with the Emperor, right? And well, who could tell that? I have huge side religious issues, which is not something that you see every day, I guess. But what might be an issue is Poland, that decide to join the coalition against us. No reason why, and such a good guy. But they managed to get Moldavia as their vassal, and we kind of need it in order to make them our PU later on. So, might as well do that right now before anyone else could join the coalition. Okay. Right now, that one is a big war. 
even if they might have their numbers for now, you have the military tech, that card tier of a general, and a lot of manpower and money to back us if we need to get some more mercs along the way. So what might be good to do is try to snipe some of the separately army so they will not be able to unite our stacks, make the life easier to us. Bangali want to join us? So why not? Now I think that we just turn the tables. We might be quite outnumbered but I don't see a situation of us losing the battle right here. And rep yeah so that is the kind of situation that we want to avoid. <laughs> Sorry bro, I don't feel like doing it, but if you're gonna engage with me on terms, I'm more than up to it. And rup, and rup, oh, you really decided to separate our stacks right now. Please tell me, how that worked for you? Son, I do think that you are a bit lost. Yep, don't think that it will end well for you. And unfortunately, good things couldn't last forever, so we kind of lost our ruler and got ourselves a shit whore. But remember, you need to send the Royal Marriage to Burgundy as soon as your ruler die, so you're still eligible to the Burgundy inheritance. And we can deal with that guys here later on. And by later, I mean now, because we have enough war score in order to take the entire of Moldavia and humiliate Poland not only for the age objective, but also to get us a bigger truce, so we can fight Bohemia before fighting Poland again. I will try to take a couple of decades as well, because why not? And in terms of coalition, pretty much no coalition whatsoever. That's a big hungry. And with that we complete the control Morava mission, and now we just need a cup of more dev in order to outgrow Poland and got ourselves a restoration of the Union Casus Belli to PU both Poland and Lithuania at the same time. But right now let me deal with that rebels. And from Moldavia, science that cannot even call the province right now, I'll be releasing Moldavia as a vessel. And since we got control of a steppe province, we also got ourselves a new state the Cossacks. They kinda got a bit of crawling right away, but it's not that big of a deal. We can just seize the land as soon as they got a bit more of loyalty, and that will be no issue. For the Cossacks, we can get some really nasty cavalry modifiers, and since we already started with 20% cavalry combat ability, we'll be getting some huge bonus into horse. I'll be giving the self governance, the Cossack leaders, the legalization of the Cossack raids and the Cossack military leadership. And for your first idea group, I think that taking something to make your armies even stronger is extremely useful. You can go with aristocrat, quality, offensive or even quantity if you really need the manpower. But science for the time being are not struggling with manpower and later on you'll be getting the book out of Christianity, I'll be completing that with offensive, so later on we can get the grand army that will give us 50% more land force limit that we kinda lack in your national ideas, and even more than that we'll be getting some better leaders, better troops and better siege. A really well rounded idea per se. Now that we have two vassals, I'll be giving the strong duchies privilege to the nobility that give us to another one diplo slot. I think that France is looking really strong this game with quality ideas, so I'll be going for them. And for a first government form, the compromise with the nobility is a must have with the stability cost modifier and the better increase in life is. And by improving my relations with Valakia, we can finally start annexing them, but not before. But giving the nobility the integration policy, so we'll not be getting the diplomatic interpretation penalty when we annex our vessels. And with our truce with Bohemia done, we can get the Bohemia Borderlands that will give us a restoration of union against Bohemia, which I'll be using right away. And since Bohemia and Austria hate each other until now, I don't need to bother about fighting anyone else. I'll call Saxony to the war because I can. That one here should be even easier than the first one, but at the same time, I'm not calling Urundi, so let's see how it goes. Yeah, and I just saw that right now. For some reason, Chile is into a bit. Is a PU of Bohemia? Because of reasons. But anyway, rep and rep. <laughs> rep. And that's enough for our union and 
other one that they, they are willing to give us, I intentionally avoid to kill the troops because I might use them against bullets. It's not like I'm gonna complain about having a strong PU in terms of coalition, no coalition whatsoever. So, yoink. Now we have a union over Bohemia and Chile, but never forget as soon as you can and when you get a new PU, start to improve with them. Because if your ruler die when you have negative opinion, you'll be just losing the PU altogether with all your effort and the best expansion that you spend it in order to get it. And I will be also start to integrate Croatia because I don't think that I need them as independent state anymore. And I kind of have a couple of more relations that I should have. And with Valakia exit, now we have three forts bought in the Ottomans. So what we can get here is to complete the Anatolian trade mission that will give us a bunch of clans around here which we can later use in order to fight the Turks. And with a couple of extra clicks here in past, we can get our third age objective and when the month day comes, we can finally start our golden era. So for the next 15 years, you'll be rocking everyone. That's just enough for us to embrace the renaissance when we have the money and the points for it. And whoa, look at that. That's a Burgundian succession. The only bad thing about this is how can I defend their capital? E yep. Yeah, so about it. There is no way that... Oh, a lot of guys is under my call, but there is no way that giving up their lowlands. I think that we can more than do it. Yeah, they might have the quantity, but the quality is definitely at our side. And since I kinda just want to get out of this war here, before my truce with Poland expire, I'm more than willing to accept a white piece. Maybe? Uh, yeah, 70 ducats, that sounds fair. That's a right, quite of a good collection of PUs, if I might say. So, let me increase it even more. That is pretty much just a joke of a fight. They even lost to the Teutons somehow. And with Croatia and Exit, now we have some pretty decent borders. I just need to get rid of Herzegovina as soon as I can. But unfortunately, they are guaranteed by Venice. So, we get that later. And as a second idea group, I strongly recommend that you took some admin. And by admin, I mean admin idea. We will be spending a lot into the East, and later on, when you got ourselves the influence ideas, the policy between the two of them is just busted. And admin offensive is not that bad either. Deliberately designed the same continent is always useful. And that apparently is more than enough to get a PU and even a cup of ducats. In terms of coalition, no one that I really care about. So right now, we have all the pieces of our Azoria and we can finally start to think about going after the older ones that, believe it or not, and is strolling against a Memlux Tunis alliance. Poland subjugated, we can get the Jungle Union, that is more diplomats and max promoted cultures for us, which can be useful in order to placate our subjects that are quite pissed off right now. And as your second government from right now for this specific game, I'll be going for the representatives of the crown because we are kind of struggle a little bit with diplo power and since I'm going to take a third idea as a diplo one and I need to really catch up in time, that will help us quite a lot. But in the meantime, you'll be using the weakness of the Ottoman Empire that are pretty much just losing a war against the Memlux in order to strike them from behind for probably a province that I can easily take such as Viren or Ternovo I'll be going for Viren and us together with our gang of PUs that I managed to get most of them at least loyal already uh, that is not exactly a fair fight so let me take Constantinople really quick I just realized that they're filling up quantity ideas which is kind of scary but truth be told they are behind in the most important mill tech in the game they are mill 5 when I are ready mill 6 and almost mill 7 so yeah 
I think that I even have the quality over them. And with a 4% cavalry compatibility, that's definitely an offer. Because I can't even take another morale of armies for the whole sea, so you'll be needing all the help you can get. And with Constantinople down, it's just a matter of scorching her and, well, keeping the ground. Well, that war with the Mamluks probably make the Ottomans bleed dry, because I kinda completely siege them. I can get 100% of war score, and we kinda didn't have a single fight. Now we have one fight. But for the peace deal, I'll be taking pretty decent looking borders, Byzantium, of course, and Kochali in order to have the other side of the street. Coalition wise, no one that I care. And that's how you crush the Ottomans, I guess. That's a pretty big hungry, but I'll be releasing Byzantium of this province here. Byzantium has a lot of reconquests here that can be really juicy to have. And we are always glad to see Byzantium back, right? Which I will be giving the Coachelli province so they can have both sides of the street in their control. And that's kinda what you'll be doing for today. Hope you enjoyed the video, we have grew quite a lot. We kinda got ourselves two good allies, that is Denmark with the whole Calvary Union and Castile with the whole Aragon Naples stuff. They had they are kind of expanding right now, and they don't have a her, which means that if their king die, we can try to get them into a pew. It's just a matter of praying a little bit to our hand Jesus. Our economy is not the best one, but it's getting there. And in terms of vessels, we have quite of a big name placement in the player map mode. Number one great power, of course, and the second best military power that we know. So I will say that is definitely a successful campaign. Hope you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe in order to not lose anything new, and also leave a like, because that will make me very, very happy. And you want to see me happy, don't you? Hey, you know that subscribing and leaving a like make you 7% more cooler? So why not give it a try?